Hello, everyone. It's Robin Moser with Robin Moser and Associates and Anna and Victoria. And we are all here today because we're drinking a great drink called The Navigator. And we're going to talk to you about how to navigate this market for buyers and for sellers, because I know everyone's calling us and they're saying, what do I do? I feel like it should be served to every client exactly. <laughs> as we go as we go to sell or buy a property. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's start with the cocktail. It's yeah. super great. You're starting with Lemoncello. Gin, I have aviation gin because I have a Ryan Reynolds fan crush girl. So Ooh. I know that I would be my, I haven't tried it yet, but yeah. So yeah, I have and seen then, him making cocktails. Yeah, oh, yes, that's very really nice. Ryan Reynolds, <laughs> I go through Ryan Reynolds movie marathons. Oh yeah, <laughs> so can't get enough of those. Fresh squeezed grape juice. Yes, grapefruit I've squeezing. juice. I've been squeezing. Yeah, thank you yeah. to Anna for the fresh squeezed grapefruit juice. I squeezed it even extra for you, just in Don't case you would like to add later. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that was... uh, now we're putting in our two ounces of gin. Oh my God, two ounces for one cocktail? Well, there's two ounces of gin and then one ounce oh. of limoncello. Oh wow, it's going to be a strong one. <laughs> Spilled that all over. And then we put it on and we shake it. Yeah, I put everything yeah. in there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did a great for too. Yeah. I think you got distracted with the Ryan Reynolds conversation. Ryan Reynolds. I actually really like watching him and uh, Blake Lively and all their little things they do to each other. It's so cute. Oh, are you following them on some social media? Oh, you're like creeping in, like standing outside of the house. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Oh, I, the color looks beautiful. Yeah. And we're going like to garnish nice this with summer. grapefruit twist. Yeah, you yeah. can do a lemon twist. That's what it says in our book is a lemon oh, twist. Good. But we're doing a grapefruit twist just because. Yeah, very so, pretty. Very pretty, yeah. beautiful cocktail. And in my grandma's glasses. Yeah, it's crystal, right? Yeah, they're crystal. My grandma's crystal. Oh, it smells so good, guys. It good. This might be a good one for like, you know, breakfast, like mimosas. But, well, okay, let's try. well, I'm going to put my thing. It's very strong, but delicious. The limoncello like really makes it. It's like not it's that strong. Really? No. Mm. I find it interesting mm -hmm. because of the fact that it actually the limoncello mm. does come yeah. forward so you know much. It's not it's not like a strong like alcoholic. I think it's because it's a little bit on a tart. Flavor is strong, yeah. but it's not strong like I can drink it as no. usual. Yeah, yeah, but it's it definitely has that mm. grapefruit bitterness. Mm -hmm. But it is a very nice cocktail. I Again, love it. Mm -hmm. it would be a good one for a palate cleanser, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Nice one to start a meal with. Remember yeah, the yellow belly we did with limoncello? Mm -hmm. This is like kind of similar, but you can definitely less dessert the gin, less yeah, gin and less yeah, yeah, less yeah. Sweet. yeah no, mm -hmm. it's uh, delicious, guys. Uh, like the smell is so fantastic. Definitely good before the dinner. What I was going to say, yeah. too, is if you want to cut the alcohol in it, they now are selling a ton of non-spirited gins in the liquor store. So yeah. you can actually use gin that's non-spirited, and then you only have the actual one ounce of limoncello in there. So if you want to cut the alcohol back because you're worried about three ounces, mm -hmm. it's actually kind of a cool option to do with cocktails now is use those non-spirited to have the same flavor. But not yeah. the same kind of. I have to alcohol. invest into limoncello. I think. I think it's time. It's been like every drink we make with limoncello. I love it because it's just such a freshness and this like just the smell is amazing. I can see why people in Italy like drink this a lot. Yes, on the on ice in yeah. the summertime, just on mm -hmm. ice. It's really nice. Really? Just oh, plain. Yeah, just plain. Uh, it's yeah. also nice if you do it with Seven uh, Up. What about uh, champagne? I usually do it with uh, sparkling wine. Uh, prosciutto. Prosciutto? Why? Prosciutto. Thank you. Prosciutto? prosciutto? No. Prosecco. Prosecco! prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming out okay. wrong. Okay. Prosecco. Prosecco. Okay. Sparkling prosecco. wine. Not the ham cheese thing. Yeah. yeah. No, it's prosciutto. Prosecco. 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 <laughs> and lemon jello. Oh, nice. Well, there you go. We barely got that straight. <laughs> Let's hope our um, navigation through the market. <laughs> A little better than that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, do you guys want to do buyers and sellers at the same time, or you just want to do buyers and then do sellers? Let's do separate. 
Uh, right? Yeah, let's do separately. I feel like the buyer's list, even just looking at our notes, is a lot longer. Uh, I think it's just because the buyer's a little bit more challenged with the current market. And then we'll go through the sellers, not because it's easier. The sellers actually, I would say, the list is shorter, what you have to navigate through, but it's more important. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and yeah, I I 100%. Just, no? I think that the buyers have a lot of balls in the air to jungle with and, you know, you kind of need to know what you're doing there. Well, the biggest yeah. thing right now, if we're talking about the current market, is that the market's not on your side as a buyer. Unfortunately, it's not. This is not a market to your favor. Currently in this current situation, on a long-term projection, on a long-term navigation, you're going to be able to buy a house and watch it grow in equity really, really quickly. And that's where the market is on your side. So you just have to know that once you get your asset, once you get your home, that your future will be very bright. You just have to get into the market or upgrading, which is another thing. As I was talking to another couple the other day about upgrading and they're saying is now a good time. And I showed them what the value of their home to upgrade to the next home would be versus if they waited four years. So yeah, as a buyer, there's a lot of things to think about, but you definitely need to understand that as buying, it's not in your favor currently, but it will be on the long term. I think for a lot of buyers, only another thing to understand, not so much that uh, the time is not on your side. It's, you know, but I think it's also, listen, at this point, we can try to get you as close as possible to your criteria list, to your wants and needs, but you will have to settle a little bit more. Flexible. more than yeah. you usually do because that not only the inventory is super super low but also there is more than one buyer on one property and if you're not being flexible then you're going to miss out on a lot of things so i had to laugh because someone said well i heard it slowed over like december november i said like slowed like there was only 10 offers per listing instead of 30 like if that's what you mean by slowed yeah. So navigate the buyers, especially when it's first time home buyers, it's a big journey. So as the girls are saying, navigate through the market. So you need you need to ask the question where market go, and we have all these graphs from crap forecast, so we can navigate you through that. But the navigation is it has legis uh, like I mean financial financial. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Navigate through financial criteria. For okay. example, there's a lot, a lot of things about financing that buyers not considering as important, but the banks and the lenders is, is like a deal breakers. For example, you need to know that your deposit, even like that you put an offer and your down payment, it need to be uh, 90 days on your account. Or if some money comes to your account, you need to be able to explain where it comes from. So it's a salary or if you sell, sell, you sell the car or it's a gift. Yeah. So this is really, really important. And I have maybe three times uh, I have clients, like they have full down payment. And one client even has one $150,000 for down payment. And they couldn't explain seven grand. And the, yeah. the lender refused to give them a mortgage with such a huge down payment. And we have really, really tight time frame and they couldn't find an explanation. The lender So, refused. yeah, I think what, you know, we've been talking about this last year a lot, this year as well, pre-approval, pre-being, not just qualified, but actually pre-approved for mortgage. Get your all your ducks in a row, your money in the bank account, to work with a mortgage broker. Like, you know, uh, all that stuff needs to be done before you start going seeing the house. Because once you so, see the house, especially if you're in a competitive situation, you basically need to be ready. Like, you need to be ready to close. Like, it will, like if you get the mortgage that day, you need to close on that day. Like, Well, know, and a lot really of important. times it's great because if you've actually given all of your documents to your lending institution or mortgage broker that you're using... A lot of them can actually get you approved in one to three days. So you can keep super short financing conditions, which could be the difference between you and another offer being chosen. So that's why that being prepared up front is a huge, huge benefit 
because that's what's going to make or break their decisions sometimes when it comes to buying a house. Also, another thing is finding really aggressive ways to write your conditions. So if we know that you are 100% qualified and the bank, what they do is they qualify you and then they qualify the house. And those are two different processes. So if we already know that you are 100% qualified. We may be able to, instead of a financing condition, write an additional condition that just says it's just subject to the bank approving the value of the home, because that's really the only thing we're trying to do. Or and that's a stronger condition than financing in general or if you're doing a home inspection and it's gonna you know that home inspection is gonna take a couple of days this couple of days will be enough for you to deal with all the financial stuff if you're already sure that it's like it's all they are confident up. yeah there is a calculated risk i think that's what we're kind of talking about you know everybody's worried about could i get pre-approved what about the home inspection I think there's a calculated risk as a, a experienced agents. We can recommend you what to take, what not to take, because we usually, when we work with the client, we know the background story and we can recommend it. I think a lot of people, like, you know what, the buyers, you guys are so educated these days. You can Google basically all the information. A lot of you watch the market. A lot of you in the market in the, some sort of way of trading or in the financial system. But the thing is, like, we actually work this like 24 seven. And I cannot say this enough. How many don't listen what the realtor has to say? And because you don't disregard the information we give you, you lose on opportunities. And that's what I say, like, you know, just because we, we say in certain things, it's an advice that we're giving to you, like a very strong recommendation, especially as a, I strongly recommend. I actually mean it. <laughs> like, well, and another and, thing yeah. uh, about navigation: don't afraid. Don't be afraid to ask about purchase contract. We can navigate you through all the purchase contracts, through all eight pages of that, and like every clause. We can explain it to you because sometimes for the people who never read that, it sounds really, really complicated. The other thing too is a big thing I hear nowadays is people are like, I'm waiting for the market to come down. Mm. It will be 2027 at least before we see any adjustment in the market. And even if it adjusts, it is going to do 7%, 7%, 7%. And if it adjusts, it'll adjust minutely and it will not come back down below where we are right now. So please understand if you're waiting for the market to come down, you are going to be paying more for a house than you will today. That yeah, is just I feel how it's so bad be. for some of the people who told me that last year and I begged them not to wait. And you know what? They will be buying this year. Yep, the interest rate is going to be, what, 1% lower? But the price is like 50K more. So like basically, we, instead of detached, they can afford duplex, for yeah. example. So like my husband says, it's never a bad time to buy. It's just sometimes a bad time to sell. Because if you wait long mm. enough, your house will be worth more than what you paid for it. It's just whether it's on your time frame or someone else's. Yeah, now, I just want to also to just mention quick. Actually, no, you know what? Go ahead, because I will talk about the sellers. Part. Okay. Well, yeah, I was also going to say is there is off market listings, listings that have come off the market that have tried selling in the last four years and were unavailable or unable to do so. You can approach those. You can have your agent approach those. You can have your agent door knock, all of those things. If your agent is a good agent, you don't have to ask for those things because we just do them automatically because, yeah. and we'll be the ones telling you and talking to you about it. But if your agent isn't bringing it up or if you want a good agent and you're not under contract and you want to have a little bit more of aggressive thing. I love the off market listings. Personally, I love when my clients can go in and they're not competing. Seriously, and no one else would rather. Exactly. No one else even knows the house is for sale. So you can get some really amazing properties on those off market listings. These are people that are unofficially for sale and we can show you them and we contact them. And yeah, it's a little bit more legwork for your agent, but that's what they're supposed to do. Yeah, exactly. I think your dog's got it really inspired. I know. And now they are going to buy something. Exactly. But let's switch to the seller. So the guy, so for the buyers, it's clear. Listen, it's, it is what it is. The market's going to be tough. Low inventory, work with a professional. Oh, and with, yeah. be realistic expectations. All yeah, expectations. well, that's what I was saying. Like, you know, you might need to adjust what kind of property you're going to be buying. And basically, I assume that you will, like, don't shop at your maximum, like, you know, because you're most likely going to end up in your, in a multiple offer situation. 
like we had over the weekend. What, yeah, 33. 33. But this is actually a great segue to the sellers is this is the other thing that I've been telling yeah. the sellers that I know I've been talking to is you have to still list at a realistic price because the buyers expect to negotiate up, not down. We've even had scenarios where the clients are like, okay, the house is asking like 550. So, you know, should I go in at like, you what, like five, price? no, 550? they're like 575. And yeah. I'm like, there's no other offers. And they're yeah. like, yeah, but I want them to accept my offer. And I'm like, how about just asking? Like, let's just yeah. try asking because yeah. there is no other <laughs> offers and you don't have to negotiate up when no one else is competing with you. That's right. But that is the the mentality of the buyers right now. So when you n put your house on the market, I always say that it's like this. You put it on the market at a realistic price and you let the irrationality of the market take the value of your home up. You don't try and go up there and have them negotiate down because that's not the expectation of the buyer. The buyers are like, hey, if they're asking 550, I know that I've got I've got room up to 600, so I'm going to pay between 550 and 600. But if they walk into your house and they don't think it's worth 550 to 600, they're not even writing an offer. And if nobody's writing an offer on your house in this market in five days, yeah, everybody's going to ask what's wrong with the house. Yeah, Why how fast not, they get yeah, stale. Exactly. It, it's not a joke. You're going to lose the value of your home by pricing like 10, 20,000 yeah. over. Well, but like, we're price. talking about like under the million dollar of houses. Anything under 800,000. 800, yeah. yeah. But still, like don't be crazy. Don't be greedy. Don't think that you can ask whatever you want. If my mom's watching this, I'm so sorry. My mom had wanted to put her property up for oh sale God. and she was like, well, this is the price I want. I said, that's awesome. Here's what it's worth. And she's like, well, why, why is that? I thought the market was better. I said, it is better. This is what it's worth in this market. That's better than what it was worth last year. And she was like, well, I don't like that price. I said, then don't sell. Cause that's all you have to do yeah. is if you don't like the price, don't sell. Again, the sellers, I, I cannot also very strong recommendation. Prepare your houses. A hundred percent. Don't slack off because you think the market. You is... have no idea. If your house is prepared so much better, cleaned and organized, staged, staged, staged or just feature even, cards. Yeah, exactly. Like prepare. Can't imagine. And don't you, let your agent slack off because agents sometimes you will slack get off in the thousands market. of dollars more if you it's it, it's completely not clean, not prepared, showing okay. like whatever. It's and even with the tenants, you can't have those conversations. A lot of tenants are really great in you know, keeping things like but you need clean. to understand the tenants are not interested of you selling the property. Yeah. So it's on your interest, not on them. They Sell it to your tenant. I tell tenants we'll, that yeah. all the time. Yeah. We'll help you. <laughs> also, you know what? It really should take a full three days to sell your home. I'm sorry. I know that it's really exciting to sell your home in a day or Within two days. Day, yeah or hours or whatever, or that you got a bully offer that is well above asking. Well, I do have to say like, know your market. There know is your a, market. know your market. There is this, you know, but I agree with Robin. Like, you know, we got, so yeah. on the house that we just sold with 33 offers, we got bully offers right away and they were all around, you know, well above I'm asking I'm a queen price. of bully offers. She's a queen of bully offers. We're all so a queen we, of bully offers. We do it all the time, but, but as the seller's agents, we don't yeah. do that. So <laughs> the, the bully <laughs> offers came in and I told them it was my recommendation to make them wait the three days that we had decided because we made an offer plan, which I'm a highly recommending yes. offer plans. And they ended up getting $30,000 more than the bully offers. I like that. I call it an, an offer, offer plan. plan. It's like a birth plan, but for the offers. Exactly. <laughs> so make an offer plan and stick to it. Don't let people bully you out of I what you're in. I think we should this. Offer the offer plan. plan. <laughs> 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 this is a great stuff coming out. RMA of offer plan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, but you, you should make an offer plan. And that offer plan should extend three days. And you should stick to it. And yes, people will come in with fabulous oh. offers. But if they're willing to pay that, then they're willing to pay that on your the, the day of your offer plan. And the offer plan should be clear and told to all agents up front so everybody knows, so that nobody has to sit there and wonder what the plan is, though they will all call your agent and ask. Okay, for this exercise, okay, because I haven't seen this. I, I competed in this particular situation because I had all my own clients. Me too. But yeah, everybody <laughs> was in there. I like, but okay, so I wanted to for add this exercise. How much so we, we know what we sold it for. What was the difference between the bully offer and what we sold it for? 30 grand. 
So the client, because grand. they listen to the and stick to the offer plan, made an extra thirty thousand dollars on the sale of their property, yeah. which was unconditional, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Versus the bully offer that came in on the first day. So that's why, like, I'm sorry. You made ten thousand dollars a day that you waited. Exactly. That's actually a great way to look at it. So ten thousand dollars a day. If I was going to give you ten thousand dollars a day to wait, would you do it? And that's why you should. So I'm sorry, mm. bully offers, as much as we will do them when we're on the buyer side, because that's our job. Yeah. But when you're on the seller side, wait. Be patient. Right? Again, so hire a, your professional. Yeah, yeah, hire a good professional. A professional that will make you wait. Mm. Yeah. And again, it's honestly... The professional who's doing bully offers but not accepting them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's because they have such a good experience. Like how many ups and downs this team went through, right? Yeah. This is not our first barbecue or rodeo, whatever you want to call it. Barbecue. That's like the Alberta way. That's not my first barbecue. Or the rodeo. I or the rodeo. Well, that would be more Alberta. So what's barbecue? Is that a Russian thing? This no, is not it's your not my first, first barbecue. barbecue. That's a Canadian thing. That, that is I, not. No one's ever said that ever. Th- there is no barbecue in Russia. <laughs> it's like, shish kebab. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm pretty sure it's not American not expression. your first barbecue? Is that Ukrainian? I've never heard that. What? Yeah. No, 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 no one's oh ever God, heard that. Oh my God, I'll Google it and I'll no send it to you. No one's ever heard that. Stop like that. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like we should be like um, getting uh, the poll going. Who me, how many people we'll actually put that use on the that expression for yeah. my first barbecue? Exactly. It'll be like nobody. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Hey, what we are talking okay, well, about. Okay, and oh, get your real property report if you're a seller. Please don't wait until you after you get it. And condo documents if you're selling condo. Absolutely. Get prepared. And if you're cashing yeah. out on your on your like you're cashing out a big real estate investment, please have a plan. I would talk to you about a plan. I'd make sure you'd have a plan. We would all make sure you have a plan. Do not take hundreds of thousands of dollars and just stick it in your bank account and do nothing with it. Yeah, listen to her. We can uh help you to buy an investment. We are talking next time. Next time okay. is Bear With Me, Honey. Oh, okay. And we are talking about living through the construction of a new neighborhood, which is a Bear With Me, Honey kind of moment. Mm. I buried that several times, <laughs> so I can talk about it. Uh, anyway, so uh, we have a scrappy dinners to win this month. And this is a scrappy kind of month. Yeah. I- <laughs> <laughs> I think the drink is kicking in for all of us. But yeah, February, it's like, you know, it's like that, that, that month as everybody's like frustrated and confused because they like done with winter, but they're looking for the summer, but the spring is still coming. I have to say, I love the weather lately. It's so lovely. Oh. Yes. I had a meme. I don't know if I reposted or not, but it will, I did like it. So it's basically like, you know, for Alberta, it says like there is a winter here and deep freeze there. And then like you think it's spring, but you're wrong. It's fake, and then, fake spring. Yeah. yeah. And, then, spring and then there's like more snow and then there's a spring and there is a, po- no, there is a Poland and a season. And then there is a spring and then there's like, summer. so what's funny is I've got about 20 fish in my pond out back, which is like, seven eight feet deep and my fish because of like the minus 30 and the nice weather and the minus 30 and the nice weather are all floating they're oh. all dying because mm-hmm. of the back and forth so we've got like 20 they confuse. koi well they, they can't sad. take it yeah so pretty sad why are you they, talking they, they, they think that it's spring but it's not exactly so they keep coming out of hibernation and going back in and it's caused them to die so we have about 20 fish and i don't know how many are floating right now but once the the ice thaws, we've actually lost a lot of our pond fish because of the back and forth cold weather. On that note, really make sad. sure you have a toque and a coat in your cord just in case. All right. Okay. <laughs> like and share us on all social medias. That is how yes. you enter to win, to win our yes. scrappy bitters. And by the way, tag your friends and family month. who you think will benefit. For example, like, oh my God, I just watched this cocktail. You should totally serve your next dinner party. Or it's the topic you should listen to because, you know, there's a lot of great information here. I do love. I, I want to say it's season four. And like, you can find all the recipes in our journal. Oh, yeah. Oh, journal. journal. Yeah, yeah, you can get it on Amazon and make your notes and have a cocktail. I like recipes. the cocktail conversation journal. It is pretty cool. Yeah. But I will tell you, that I do love how everyone, like, we do get a lot of people that are like, I love your tipsy realtor. I'm like, thanks. 
Yes, Sometimes, we get a, yeah, we, we, I know. We get a lot of really positive yeah, yeah. comments and we super appreciate that. And, but please go online and get our conversation cocktail journal. Take notes on what we're talking about. Keep what helps you make the jur- uh, the cocktails. Let us know what you like, what you don't like. Yeah. Take notes on what we say about it's, it. And see you if know, you think the I same. feel like, like 2024 have started so long time ago. Like just the way that the like, gorilla state has been going okay. and all the topics we've been discussing. I think we need what were you looking for? Okay, keep talking. Yeah. I'm gonna show you something. I was okay, okay. I know where it is. She's gonna go show something. But I wanna say it's like, you know what, we're just approaching March, which is technically gonna be a spring market in Calgary. So we have like tons of time. If you guys thinking of buying or selling a property. Do give us a call. Look how yeah. far through the cocktail journal we're through. Like, go look. Put that <gasps> are we through half of it? Over half. Show Over that. Half. Oh Show that. God. We are so far. Every time I go looking to see, yeah, like, this guy. how far down we are, yeah, like, it is yeah. utterly amazing yeah. as to how far through the book we are. And I'm always amazed, like, how far You know what I'm amazed about? Like, how we still coming out with the topics to talk about. <laughs> I know. <laughs> because, I mean, there's a cocktail at the bottom of the pit there. But the real estate topics. Well, like... I was telling someone that I was laughing really hard because, like, sometimes when we're making, so we sit in July basically on the deck with cocktails and we make the next season. June, July is usually yeah, when we do summertime. it. Yeah. Yeah. And we sit outside, we make the cocktails, the season, next season, all the subjects, all that kind of stuff. And we pair everything together so that it makes sense. And there are times where at the time <laughs> I don't think about the ingredients because I'm usually the ingredients getter. Yeah. And, like, I remember when we came up with blood oranges and we had all these blood orange cocktails and I'm like, I don't even know if it's blood orange season. So things that we have to think about this year is to make sure that we actually have seasonal ingredients instead of me trying to rush around Calgary and see who's selling, see who is selling blood oranges. But it's a lovely, lovely book. All right. So thanks for watching. On that note, if you guys, again, planning to buy or sell in the house because it's only the beginning of 2024, please contact us because there is a, this year is not going to be super easy for either party because even though it's a seller's market, there is a lot to navigate. And with the right advice, you can make a lot more money. And buyers... Or save. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And buyers, the same thing. Like, you know, you need your realtors to be very proactive and very aggressive in this market. Yeah. And it's also, too, is these extreme markets, which this is an extreme market. Yeah, it's not normal. No, <laughs> this is probably. We can talk about this forever. Yeah. Oh, my God. But when, I, I these like are the like, kind of <laughs> markets. No, but these are the kind of markets that you need the experts in the most. Like, this is the kind of market where you really, really, really should not be, no matter if you're a buyer or a seller, navigating it on your own, because it is the extreme example. You're going to be in a lose situation there if you do it on your own. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So okay. call us. We love to help you out, buyers, sellers, friends, families, coworkers, people you like, people you don't like. We'll help them all. <laughs> okay. Thanks Bye. for watching. Bye.